both sides are fully notched and cleaned up with the flabby disc. And then I've just gone in as well and cut the tray mounts um, at the back just where they're all gonna hit as well. So this one's just sort of got a bit of an angle cut out of it. Um, so that should clear hopefully. If not, I can always flap a disc a bit more. Same on this side. And that's all cut out too. So now I'm gonna start taking some measurements and I might use some cardboard if I've got some to just double check that all my measurements will be right and sit how I want it to. And then once I've got them right, I can cut them out of the sheet metal. All right, so I've just done some maths just to figure out these sides. Um, and basically I've got my three um, fixed measurements. So I've got my 50 mil that I want to come out off the side of the tray. And then I've got 70 mil that I came up from the bottom. So I've gone from there to there is 70 and then I want it to come out 50 mil. Um, so, and then obviously that is a 90 degree angle there. So with those three points, you can put that in a triangle calculator online and it'll give you the other three. So I've ended up with 36 degrees from the top, 54 at the bottom, and the um, hypotenuse there, the longest length will be 87. So basically all I need to do is cut my um, top middle piece, uh, the full length from there to there, which is 535. So I'll cut it 535. Then I've just got to tack it up the top and hold it on a 36 degree angle there. And I know I need to cut it at 87 mil wide and it'll sit dead level with the bottom there and be sitting out 50 mil. And then the two little corner pieces here and there. I know that that measurement there is 100 mil and 100 mil there. And then it's actually technically 98, but I'll round it up to 100. We know that the other point is 87, and then I've just got to figure out that point there. Um, I'm not sure how I'll do that yet because it's coming out on the angle, so I'm not sure what that bottom piece will be, but it'll be easy enough to figure out once that piece is tacked on, sitting at the right height. I'll know I'll be able to cut those two and just figure out that last piece there. And yeah, then I should be able to tack it all up and it should be spot on. So I'll cut one of these sides now and see how I go. Right, so I've just finished one of those sides, finished cutting that. Then I've just come over to a square surface. I've used my square here that's got the angle finder on it. I've marked 36 degrees, which is what we figured out before online. And then I've just gone with my bevel, set it at that line there. Um, and now when I tack this piece on, that bit there, I'll be able to sit this against the tray side like that and hold it under that and tack it on and that'll hold it at that 36 degrees which should then sit at 50 mil out there and i'll be able to figure out these little corner pieces so i've got this piece tacked on where i'm happy with it for the angle and everything and then i've just gone through and i've butted it in there to that corner and it's basically 85 mil there and there which is what it should be it should be the exact same measurement um, so i've written that down so now i'll cut two triangles with 100 mil on one edge, 87 and 85, and that should do both of them. Um, you can sort of see, if I go from behind, the bottom edge lines up, and from above, it still allows the tire to poke about 40 mil, which is about what the front is, which is why I've wanted it to come out like that. Um, so yeah, pretty happy with that. I'll tack on those two corner pieces as well, and sort of get an all-round look of it, make sure I'm happy with it before I do the same on the other side. Not the best view, but you can see that's all tacked on now. So that allows me to sort of cover a bit more of the tire and add a bit more style to the tray. You can see that there. And now off the bottom of that, because it's all level, I'll be able to build my mud guards down on the angle off that come across and then up to that side so once they're done it should look a lot nicer as well because at the moment obviously it's all just at one level um so it looks a bit funny at the moment because nothing's filled in underneath but yeah once the guards are in and once i fill in a bit of stuff in there because i might make up some either storage boxes or just a flat panel of some sort um that should look better too but I'm very happy with that. So I'm gonna replicate that on the other side. Then I'll weld it off, grind it back, paint it, and then I can move on to this back tailgate section. 
All right, so I just quickly flexed it up again just to make sure that while this is all tacked on, it didn't hit on anything. And you can see it tucks in there very nicely. It's not close to anything anymore. And then you can see now it's not hitting on the tray mount. Um, it's still got a little bit more up travel, but barely. Um, so yeah, pretty happy with that. And obviously the further up it goes, it's not gonna get any closer to anything. You've got like 50 mil clearance, both ends. So very happy with that. So now I know I can weld that off. And you can see she's flexing pretty good. It's dropping a 37 well below the sill. So pretty stoked with this. All right, it's about an hour later. I've got this side welded on. I've just got a little bit more grinding to do with the flappy disc and then paint that. Uh, I fully welded the inside too because I'm grinding the outside. Um, I didn't want it to be weak. So um, that side's just got a fresh coat of paint on it. I'll still neaten it up before I powder coat the whole thing. But for now, I'm just sort of getting it semi-decent and then just chucking some um, rattle can paint on it. And yeah, so that side's fully done. So this side, I can start measuring out the mud guards. This side, you can see fully welded the inside, just need to grind that quickly, um, paint that, finish um, tidying that up a little bit and paint that, but starting to look pretty sick. Um, but yeah, that's probably gonna do me for tonight. It's getting a bit dark. So I'll finish this off tomorrow and pick up the camera. I've moved on to the back now. I've got these two bits welded on. Um, so basically all I did was sit them on the little upright bits. So it's got a 15 degree cut there and then 45 at the top. And then I'm just doing the top sections now, which is a 45 and another 15. So these should sit on top like that and connect it all in. And I've double checked to make sure from inside there to inside there is exactly square to the top points as well, which is 1220 which means out of this steel here, I can make up the tailgate, it'll fold down. Um, this one here is already cut for that side, so I'll sit that in place now, tack that on, get the measurement over there, make sure everything's all good. And also made sure that they're sitting dead straight um, like that, through that line there, because obviously you want it to not be bent out on one, because then the tailgate's not gonna sit flush. So you just gotta keep an eye on all that sort of stuff as you're doing it. But yeah, getting there slowly. Um, yeah, so I'll tack this piece on and I'll film after that. So you can see what that piece looks like there. Keeps it level at the top. Gives it a nice square corner there. So I'll finish that side, weld it all off, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Here's where I got up to last night. Um, got these pieces welded, grinded and painted. So now I can sheet them, which for the sheet, all I'll do is I'll get it from there flush, um, fold it there on the 90 degree, then from there to there I'll cut a 45, and then obviously just scribe that cut there and blend that all in, and then cut the angle, check it around that piece there, and that'll be that, same on the other side. And then I was playing around um, on Photoshop today, just sort of planning out these little sections here, um, and I might put a clip in if I've got it still um, of what I came up with and that's sort of the design I'm going for. But basically that piece there coming down on the 45 will continue down. So I'll get a bit of, um, I actually want this to continue down rather than going down straight. I want it to go down on like a 10 degree angle. So I've got to get another bit of three mil or two mil sheet folded up with a 100 degree bend, so it comes 90, well 90 there, and then down on the 10, so 100 all up, and then that'll come to that point, down on the 45, continue there, and down to that body line there, so I need a measure from there to there, that's where the fold will be, and then I'll just get it square to that point, and I can cut that myself, and that's going to cover all that in, and allow me to mount my fuel filler there, that I can finally mount that up properly. Um, so yeah, it'll cover all that ugly shit in there. And then, so that's where that'll go to there. And then I'll cut another piece from the long point there up to there and there. So I'll make a little triangle infill, which will add strength to this as well as add a bit more character. 
Um, that'll be on the same on the other side. This side will be fuel filler, other side will be exhaust exit. And then here, the mud flap will come down here on the 45, same as that. It'll hang down to cover about, oh, maybe a third of the tire. And then this will get sheeted down on the angle. And then same thing from that point to there. And then another one up there. So there'll be triangle pieces there to keep the sort of look uniform. Um, and yeah, then on the back here, sheet that. And I'm about to weld up this tailgate finally and figure out what sort of hinges I want. I'm not sure if I'm going to do front face hinges or whether I'm going to try and do them inside on the top. Um, I guess I'll just see what's going to work the best. But yeah, I'll um, get these pieces here welded up. As you can see, if I lay this out, that one goes there. Then you've got the two sides. These have already been cut to length with 45s on it. I actually usually do a 46 degree cut, um, which I've just learnt through building because you always want that long point to touch rather than the inside because it's a lot easier to fill there than it is that end piece. So there are 46s. So I can weld this up, get the hinges mounted up. Obviously that's just rough, but that's just going to be that. And I'm actually thinking rather than having this as one flat piece, then might do like a little rib section in it to mount my stickers in. Because I've just got off eBay two big um, silver stickers that say Nissan and then Patrol at the bottom. Just add a bit of character. So hopefully I can get that done this weekend before I go away. Because we're going on our first four-wheel drive trip with this thing. Um, heading up to Cobor for a photo shoot and stuff. So want to try and get as much done as I can. But with work, hours being a bit crazy at the moment, it's going to be difficult. Uh, i tell you what, I'm bloody sick of daylight savings not being on because I'm getting home and I'm getting about an hour to work on the car and then it gets pitch black again but oh well um, as you can see I finished off um, making this frame up so that's sitting perfect got a few mil gap that side about five and about oh, maybe two mil that side so I can squidge that over a little bit but with the hinges I'll be able to play with it um, Basically, now I'm just gonna, I've got a few different types of hinges, so I'll play around with which style is gonna work the best. I'll screw them in or tack them in for now, um, and then I'll be able to weld that off and get that sheeted as well. So I ended up using some gate hinges, some weld on gate hinges. Um, it's probably a bit hard to tell, but they're 100 by 50, and all I did was just cut out a little recess there so that it didn't sit inside that part, because that's the part where the sheet's going. Um, I've given it all the grind back and painted that same on that side and I've got them facing the same way so that I can actually slide off as you can see and then if I go onto the actual tray um, this is just welded on here on the top part that way it doesn't stick down here it's not really noticeable just welded all the way around there grinded it back and painted it and so basically it'll be able to slot on that way and slide across and that's going to lock it in and sit it up and the reason i wanted it removable is one so that if i do um like want to put anything in and overhang it i can do that without the tailgate two i sort of want to make up another tailgate that's on an angle that um, mounts a spare tire on it for something cool um so it just sort of leaves me open to do what i want down the track rather than having it fully welded and sort of stuck in and I'd have to cut shit out just to remove the tailgate down the track. So, and I didn't want to have to screw or bolt anything on. So this way works well. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to wait for this paint to dry a little bit. I'll chuck it on. And then I've got a couple, I've got some um, techies there just to mount the little latches I've got. I'm going to put some latches either on the top or on the back side of it. Um, some little clamp latches and that will stop it from being able to fall off or come down. And I've also got a, got a gas strut, but I'm just not sure if that's going to work or not. I've never really put a gas strut on something before. These are the little clamp latches I've got. So that'll screw to one end and it comes down like that. Then you screw the hook on and as that, so it starts like that. And as that clamps down, it'll pull it in tight and lock it in. You can adjust it by putting the thread in or out. Um, which will have it give it a longer or shorter stroke depending on how tight you need to get it So these are just from Bunnings too. I think they're like 15 bucks um, So yeah, I'll put one of them either side and we should be good to go 
All right, I'm all done for tonight. I've got those latches on. Um, what I ended up doing, you're probably not gonna be able to see it much. What I ended up doing is I tech screwed it all on um, on this part as well, but then the latch handle actually hit the body of it. I'm sorry, the latch hit the tech screw head. So I've ended up welding that on, tech screwing that. And now I've given it paint just so it all blends in. But it doesn't move at all now. It's nice and tight. So pretty happy with that. I'll give you a proper look tomorrow when the um, sun's out. All right, guys, I'm just gonna throw this clip in. A um, few things have changed with the plan of the build. I've taken the tray off. It's been sitting in the yard for a couple of weeks now. And I'm sure most of you probably know anyway from the Instagram and stuff, but I've actually put a tub on it. So come across this idea off a bloke on Facebook. Um, and it basically it's a Ranger tub, which I'll be doing a full video on soon. So that's all I'll show for that now. But basically because my original plan was to make this into like a tray slash tub looking sort of setup, because I've got the tub, an actual tub now, I'm not gonna keep building this one. I'm not gonna waste my time with it. Um, what I will do though, is build another tray um, from scratch. That's just a dedicated tray, a normal sort of looking tray for the tough wheeling stuff. And then the tub will be my camping slash daily setup. So um, it'll have like tub rack, rooftop tent, long drawers and stuff because it's an extra cab tub so it's quite long um and then the tray that i'll build will be short still and purely for off-road um and yeah basically that's my plan so um sorry if anyone has enjoyed watching me build this tray it's obviously very very unfinished um so i don't think anyone's going to be too upset about it but that's where my um yeah, that's sort of the plan at the moment. So that's why this is just going to sit here. I might even just chuck it out, to be honest, unless anyone wants it. Chuck a comment down below, but most likely I'll just bin it. I'm fucking sick of stuff being up in the backyard. So, um, yeah, that's going to end this video. I sort of I thought I'd still upload the rest of these clips from this video just to sort of show you what I've been doing and maybe give you ideas if you want to follow the same sort of setup. But, yeah, there won't be any more on the tray uh, for a while until this is all set up. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.